Hey everyone, this is Zedrin. So, I'm a fast animator, and I kind of want to share my methods to explain how I've gotten so fast because it kind of boils down to three rules. Number one is I memorize my hotkeys, which significantly speeds up my ability to animate. I'm not going to be going into details of what each hotkey is or what each hotkey does, but I will have a display down in the bottom right hand corner of my screen that demonstrates what key I'm pressing. Um, two, make sure you use plugins that streamline your work, and this one I'll be discussing a lot. And three, utilize minimalism where it's effective. More details does not always mean something will look better. This applies to both your art and to the animation itself. Also, good nesting and organization is very, very important, and I will go into this as well. Just don't overdo whatever it is you're trying to do. Know that this tutorial is a bit long, so I've included chapters where you can basically skip using annotations or links in the description. Keep in mind that this tutorial is long because I'm basically trying to condense stuff that I've learned over the course of like three to four to five years don't know exactly how many, I'm trying to condense it into a single video that you can watch in a single sitting. Ultimately, you're going to have to come up with a lot of your own methods to get fast, but this is basically what I do. Now I'm going to assume that you know the basic forays of animating in Flash, and if you don't know those then you're at the wrong tutorial because this is an experience tutorial. This is to show you how to get better, not to teach you from scratch. I've got actually another tutorial that does teach you how to learn from scratch over on this channel instead, so you can click that if you want. Anyway, for those of you who know me, I am a rig-based animator, which means I animate using puppets. Frame by frame is great as well, but it's not what I'm going to be covering here. So originally I was going to do a tutorial on me making a puppet from scratch, but in hindsight that would be very long and not show a lot of information, and it was kind of boring. So instead I'm going to just get straight to it with animating with a brief overview of puppet organization. If you notice, each frame corresponds to a different angle for the parent rig. This means that if I want to use a certain angle, I can just select it, then break it apart and distribute its components to layers. This also means that when making a puppet, everything has to be a graphic symbol set to single frame, not looped or play once. So naturally, the first thing to do when animating is to decide what the hell you want to do. And in this case, I'm going to take one of my friend's Plaster Brains songs, because she's goddamn amazing at music, and I'm going to be lip syncing a little bit of it. How did I end up here? First things first, you want to draw out some storyboards. Contrary to popular belief, these do not need to be very detailed. As long as they communicate your ideas effectively to the person receiving you, them, you're good. And in this case, because they're by me for me, I don't have to make them at all detailed and I can make them look like chicken scratch. So all I need my boards to tell me is basically what position that she's in in these certain frames. So as you can see, she's facing front here and then she's facing three quarters here and that's all I need to know. Alright, I'm going to turn this into a guide layer because I don't want it to show up on the main animation, but I still want to reference it. And I'm going to do that using a plugin, but I'm going to give the information on the screen because it's a minor plugin and I don't want to go into details. Because this is lip syncing focused, I'm going to get that knocked out before animating the rig itself. Normally I just break down the front view and distribute it to layers. Instead I'm going to take the front facing mouth from my library and center it in the screen on a new layer using the main timeline. The reverse way to do this is to import the audio into the head itself and then lip sync it internally. I'll demonstrate how I use that to animate the eyes later, but the same thing would apply to the mouth. Set the mouth to single frame, and now it's time for Keyframe Caddy, one of my favorite plugins. Keyframe Caddy is a wonderful plugin that analyzes a symbol and makes a button for each unique frame it finds. This allows you to visually lip sync something, which is actually really useful. Normally you'd have to set each frame manually after listening to it and hope that you got it right. All I gotta do is listen to a sample of the audio, see what sound it makes, and then click the corresponding button in Keyframe Caddy to set the symbol to that frame. If your mouth has a limited number of positions, you can utilize deformations and scales to give them a little bit more movement. Also, don't try to lip sync every single frame. Hell, don't even do 100% in twos either. Mix it up, do mouth movements where they're necessary, not where arbitrary standards tell you to put them. This is both looks better and is less work. If you're doing deformations and scales, you can even use the dreaded tweens to give yourself a little bit more variety in your animation. Is there a part where the voice has vibrato? You can use a custom ease with oscillation to make it look like it's vibrating. And if it looks too smooth, just use the plugin like tween to keys to convert it all from tweens into twos. How did I end up here? Alright, now that the lip syncing's done, it's time to use another plugin, and this one I'm actually going to go into detail on because it's actually really fuck important. So first I'm going to copy all the frames I just animated using Control alt c and then I'm going to run a plugin called New Anim Clip. All New Anim Clip does is it creates a symbol in the dead center of the stage, and while that might sound mundane, it's actually a really important tool, because this means that if I import this lip syncing that I just did into the same location, basically the default state of the symbol will be exactly as it was before, it'll just be a single object instead of a bunch of individual frames. New Anim Clip is probably the most important nesting tool available to Flash animators, and I highly recommend using it. Seriously, it's like in my top 5 for reasons why I've gotten so fast. 
Anyway, I'm going to give the lip synced mouth a name that I can easily identify because naming is important for symbols and you should always use unique names and if you're not then what the hell are you doing? Anyway, now I'm going to break apart the front view like I said I was going to, and I'm going to distribute it to layers. Now I'm going to take the head and I'm going to duplicate it and give it a unique name because again, keep your names unique for the symbols. The difference is this head is actually going to play back in real time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to then go into this head, and I'm going to replace the mouth with the one that I just made. And because I animated this mouth in the dead center of the stage at 100% scale, there's literally nothing else I have to do as far as replacement goes. I don't have to reposition it, I don't have to rescale it or anything like that. I can just set it to play once and I'm good to go. Now it's time to do something about these creepy old eyes. It'd be easier if I had the audio present when I'm animating this, and I don't want to break this apart and then re-nest it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the frame of the audio track and import it into the head. Because the head is a graphic symbol, I don't have to worry about the audio playing twice in the animation. Now you can build your eyes however you want, I prefer to use masks for mine, but regardless, I still find it easier to break apart the eyes and animate them directly on the timeline where I'm working, and in this case it's a nested timeline. So time for another plugin, I have Break Into Layers. Well all this might look like is that it breaks a symbol apart and distributes it to layers, it also preserves the layer structure, so that means any masks that I have to find get to stay. There are honestly so many different ways you can approach eyes. You can do nesting, you can do masks, you can do single frame eyes. Do whatever works for your purposes, just figure out what that is. Personally, I am kicking myself for not having the eyelashes as part of the eyelids, because that would have saved me a whole lot of time in this. My general process for animation isn't anything special. I just choose out the most important keyframes and get my keys ready. When that's done, I'll often just do a tween between them that uses a custom ease to make sure that it's easing in and out. There's some minute behaviors that you want to account for that's usually just solved by adding in additional keyframes if you do decide to use tweens, but I will cover more of that later when I'm animating the body and stuff and I can show it in better detail. The big thing to note with this movement, it's really just three main keyframes. The face starts in position 1, moves down a bit to position 2, then moves up to the final position 3. While I do need to do some frame by frame work for the eyelashes, proper easing means that this looks suitable and natural even with tweens. I do still like to run a passive tween to keys for the bigger motions just so they don't look too smooth, but that's just me. Now that I'm done with the head, I can take care of any external animated components with the body, such as the hair, and use new anim clip to once again re-nest everything into a single symbol so that way I can move this around, zoom it, pan it, whatever I want with it. How did I end up here? And it's looking pretty good. Whenever you complete a piece of animation or a sequence, I would seriously recommend nesting the character, just so that way they're a little bit easier to work with when you are animating other aspects. For example, right now I want to go on and animate the three-quarter portion. However, if I did that right now without first nesting this previous animation, I would wind up with way more layers than I can handle. A clean timeline leads to faster animations. Now you may have noticed that I'm able to do tweens with a single key press, as well as a few other functions with weird key presses that aren't normally default hotkeys. And that's thanks to a plugin which is probably my number one tool that I would recommend you get, and that is the Janimation Toolkit. The Janimation Toolkit is essentially a cluster of plugins. I have their own demo video linked in the description here, so you can check that if you want more in-depth tutorials on how to work it. But I'm going to give a brief overview of how it works, because this thing is a godsend. Insert basically applies the rig tool. I don't use this much personally, but if you're designing puppets, it's basically to rapidly apply the default rotation and anchor points for a component. Home is the batch select. I use this a lot, probably the second most out of all the plugins inside this packet. It selects all layers on a selected frame. However, it'll stop a selection if it reaches any layers that are labeled underscore. If you've noticed on my timeline, I have a layer above my workspace that's labeled underscore, and my lowest layer is also labeled underscore. This allows me to rapidly select all components on a animation and immediately key them out. Batch select is excellent for doing key poses for this reason. Page up and page down just select your layers, just a useful utility, also good for finding stray components. And applies a note, not really useful unless you need to use the quick tween function. 7 is your quick tween tool, which while I don't use it that much personally, it's very good at applying an ease tween for a component that flips or moves across layers. This is especially useful if you have something that's, say, a hand behind the body that moves in front, so you need it to jump from a lower layer to a higher layer. Now what I use the most are actually the custom tweens, which are a cluster of keys 4, 5, 6, and 8. These can apply ease in, ease out, no ease, and ease both with a single key press. What makes this so advantageous is not only that I can apply a tween with a single key press, but the fact that I can apply an eased tween with a single key press. This saves me so much time. Lastly, we have 9 that acts as a flip function. 
plus and minus, which allow you to bump back and forward through frames, which you might have noticed me doing that frequently. You also have smart keys, which can apply a keyframe in a custom ease tween without disrupting the flow of the tween itself. So basically, if you have something easing in and out and you apply a smart key at the center, the first half will be ease out and the latter half will be ease in. Whereas normally, it would make the first half ease out and in and the latter half would just be a flat uneased tween. In a shell nut, it basically just makes adding keyframes to a tween unnoticeable. And lastly, we have scrub keyframes, which just allows you to jump between keyframes on your timeline. It doesn't actually do anything function-wise. Now I'm going to animate the three-quarters version, which is going to be similar to how I did the front view. First I'm going to lip-sync everything, then I'm going to break everything apart and start posing it when it's ready. As before, remember that less can be more, especially when lip-syncing. I'm going to just let this play out for a bit in silence so I can take a break. Meanwhile, you guys can just watch it or you can click the annotation below to skip ahead to the next section. Good God, I have been talking fast. How did I end up here? Alright, at this point, I'm nearly done with the animation. Some things you hopefully notice with my approach. When doing recoil in anticipation, instead of doing each individual object with its own unique form and motion, it's often better to kind of keep things grouped together. The end result is fairly indistinguishable, but it's way faster. Say I need to make her move backwards. The anticipation for that would involve her moving forward a little bit, but instead of having each individual part moving forward individually, I can just select all the parts around her torso, such as her arms and shoulders and waist and whatnot, and move all those together in unison. One other thing you may notice is that I join the hands and the wrists together. This is because I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of wrist motion, so I decided to just keep them grouped together to have less symbols to work with. You should always look for opportunities where you can group symbols together like this. The hip motion for this next part is going to be done in a loop, but it's also the most complicated part to animate. Luckily I only have to do one iteration of the loop and I can just duplicate everything else from there on out. 
You can also use loops to make canned animations such as walk cycles and whatnot, but that's another topic. Even though I already have an animatic, I'm going to make a slightly more detailed one just to help me visualize what I want, and it will also help me get the timings down before I start. Anatomy study will really go a long ways here. For more complex motions, references are going to be a godsend. Keep in mind you can also import FLV files into the timeline itself, and you can rotoscope directly over those if you ever want to take a video or find a video of something that you want to animate. At this part I can also demonstrate the advantage of my puppet arrangement. Since all the angles exist for an individual part, since I want to switch to front view for the torso to emphasize the hip motions, I can just change a few frames instead of swapping symbols altogether. There's not much else for me to talk about here that I haven't already said, and watching probably tells you more than my speaking, which you're probably getting sick of by this point. So otherwise this tutorial is pretty much wrapped up. I packed a lot of information into this, probably about three to five years worth, and this probably would have been better if I broke it up into like six different tutorials, each one demoing a different technique or tool, but screw that, I'm just going to put chapters on this instead. If you have questions about something that I did, post a comment and I'll answer it the best I can. If you like this tutorial, I have a Patreon that you can consider donating to. No pressure. Also be sure to check out Plasterbrain SoundCloud because her music is freaking amazing. Anyway, thanks for watching. How did I end up here?